We stay in the cultivation hall to practice, to cultivate, to improve, to attain deep concentration. We use that deep concentration when listening to the teachings to be able to understand. Our cultivation and our listening to the teachings go hand in hand. We cultivate to attain the concentration to calm the wandering thoughts to be able to focus on what we are hearing. We listen and we focus on those teachings to learn why we cultivate. They are complementary. We need to do both on a daily basis. Deep concentration will allow the wandering thoughts to gradually be reduced. When they are reduced, we will start to naturally give rise to our innate wisdom. And wisdom is the sixth Paramita. This is not worldly wisdom. This is not knowledge, what we go to school to learn, what we learn throughout our lives, in our reading, through our experience. This wisdom is innate wisdom. It is perfect understanding. People who have wisdom can hear a very complicated problem just one time and intuitively know how to solve it. We too have this ability. They have begun to uncover their wisdom. Ours is still buried very, very deeply within us. It is buried by our bad habits, our faults, our attachments, our worrying about things. Our greed, our anger, our arrogance, our ignorance. We are deluded. We do not understand. We listen. We hear the words. We don't understand. If we can practice, if we can concentrate, the wandering thoughts will calm down and that wisdom will start to arise from within us. It is perfect. Our compassion is perfect. Our abilities are perfect. They're already inside of us. We don't need to seek from outside of ourselves. Everything we need, we already have. The only being who is keeping us from uncovering this wisdom, compassion, 
loving kindness is us. We have an unbelievably rare opportunity. We cannot begin to understand how rare it is. Imagine a vast ocean, larger than anything we have in this world, larger than many, many worlds. At the bottom, the deepest part of that ocean, imagine one tiny bubble. Imagine it rising to the surface of that ocean. And imagine one very small wreath of flowers floating on the surface of that ocean. Imagine that bubble rising slowly to the surface to break through the surface within that one wreath of flowers. If we can begin to imagine what that is like, then we will begin to understand how rare it is to be sitting here listening to the wisdom of the Buddhas. When Buddhism is gone from this world, and Buddha Shakyamuni told us how long the teachings would remain, when they are gone from this world in about 9,000 years, there will be no Buddha to teach us for approximately six billion years. We cannot imagine this number. How long did we have to wait for Buddha Shakyamuni to be born? And he lived a mere eight decades. He taught 49 years. We are living in times of some peace, some warfare, but for us here in Australia, things are peaceful. We have very good conditions. People here are well educated. They can have good jobs. They have the time to study, to learn. We have very good conditions here. We have practiced many, many lifetimes. We have listened to the teachings an uncountable number of times. We have said, I will become a Buddha innumerable times. We have told others, I will go to the Western Pure Land. I will come back. I will help you. Many times. We have not done so. We are still here. They, beings that we promised to help, are still here. We do not go to the Western Pure Land for ourselves. We go there to help all others.
We go there to learn all the different methods. We don't need to learn them now. We need one method for us. That is the Pure Land method. The other methods are equally good, perhaps more suitable for others than for us.